Hi everybody, thank y'all for being with me. This is D, and this is a tribute to my heaven, Shannon Lynn Thomas, the phoenix rising from her ashes. So I guess I'll start with how we met. So I knew Baby back in 1992. Uh, she was with this band called Mission Play, and me and my buddy went to audition. We winded up... Um, getting in the band. I was the choreographer. And so for many years, we performed and became family. We toured, opened up for a lot of celebrities. And, you know, it was big for being 17. We performed a lot around the city of Rockford, too. And so um, that's basically how we met. And I winded up moving, um, like I was going like 20 years from going to Cali, then back, and then Kansas City, and then to Orlando. So I hadn't seen Baby in like like close to 20 years. So when I left Orlando, the reason I left Orlando, I was uh, out of a 10-year relationship, and out the blue, my mom passed. Uh, well, she was about to pass. So I got a chance to come back to Rockford, be with my mom and um, family. And, you know, uh, I got to actually spend the, her last seconds with her uh, as she didn't, wasn't breathing anymore. We were holding her hands, me and my brother. So it was a very difficult time for my brother, my sister, and my nephew and I. That's all we had is us. And so we, we just held each other together the best we could and so it was a lot of healing that was like 2012 was when all that happened when I came back to Rockford so I was healing a lot and so basically when I got back I was looking for my old crew all my old friends the band and you know friends from school and all of this and before I knew it I ran into most people from back back when I saw pretty much most people a lot of people were still here had moved came back or what have you and I just you know had a good time it was like back to the future uh seeing all these people after being gone so long and I was looking for Shannon I was looking for Fred I ran into Mark uh who was in the band Mark Tennant and he was one of the first dudes I saw him inside and I got my answers to what happened to my buddy Cy because before he was another reason I left in the first place. Uh, he winded up having a um, schizophrenia. At that time, I didn't know that. And so uh, his health was a huge problem and uh, he wasn't communicating correctly and all this, but that's another story. But uh, I winded up uh, coming back here and I saw... Mark, and I got to see Sai. I talked to Sai's mom. She explained to me what happened and everything. And so I'm hanging out with Sai and Mark and all of this back like, you know, it was 20 years ago. But now we're all 20 years older. And a lot had changed. Uh, Sai wasn't, wasn't like he was when we were younger, of course. But uh, Mark and everybody was still around and doing, living life and everything. So... Uh, it was good to be back in everybody's graces, but I was asking around for Shannon, Fred, nobody knew, Mark didn't know, no, nobody knew. So I just figured, well, maybe they're still together somewhere, married or whatever, and paid it no mind, but I was just wondering, where, where are they? So I kind of like, you know, time went past and I really hadn't thought about them in some time. I guess they were in the background of my mind, like maybe I'll run into them. Uh, eventually. So I'm here like, and I'm teaching dance um, at Fight College, uh, right down on North Main down here in Rockford, Illinois. And so uh, we had been going through a lot during that time. And a lot of dance classes, a lot of events, and um, just a lot, lot, lot of exercise and dancing and Going, going, going. I even went back to Orlando for this dance event. And it really, really, like, when I got back, it it made me see that I was um, 
ready for a new life, ready to move on, ready to go and start fresh and new with dancing and uh, doing all the things I loved because I was still healing from what happened with my mom. So doing all these different things, uh, I didn't have time to actually feel a lot of the emotions. I just kept going, 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 doing, doing, doing. And one day I just, I was in my apartment alone and I just started crying and crying and crying and crying, thinking about my mom and everything that had happened to me up until that point of my life. And I had so many questions that weren't answered. I I had, I wanted to know how the world really worked and I was trying to find me and I had so many questions and for being like 35 years old, you know, I had this vision in my mind of what I would be like when I was of 40 years of age and what that would look like. Well, nothing was right at that time. Nothing was uh, reflecting back to me what I thought it should in my life. Uh, all my efforts and all my time doing so much. I mean, I did so much in Orlando. I'm not all that could be another video itself, but for all my efforts, I just never felt like I got my worth. And uh, so I cried and cried and cried, and then finally, like it was just I don't know. Maybe those tears opened the heaven's gates. Because the next day, uh, I was coming from Fight College. I did a class, and I went and got a like a Gatorade uh, across the street at the mobile, and while well, I was going to, and then I saw this girl get out her car, this red Chevy, uh, I mean red Ford. She called it Cherry, but she was walking towards the door, and so I'm in the middle of the parking lot, and I was timing her walking with my walking and seeing if I had enough time to get the door for her. My mama taught me to be a gentleman. So that's what I was doing. So I went up to the door as fast as I could, but she had a pretty good pace on me. So uh, I got to the door. Her hand was on the handle at the same time as mine. We both grabbed it at the same time. But her position was slightly at a profile angle. I only seen like slightly half her profile, not her face dead on. And I still knew who it was. I said, Shannon? She said, D? And we just looked at each other. And we was like, wow. And so we hugged. As soon as we hugged, y'all, the whole world stopped. I've never experienced that before. I'm telling you, the whole world stopped. She experienced it too. It was just me and her. Nothing else. It was just like, and it was only a few moments. But that hug was like, you're home. I'm home. So we hugged. And we talked for like a quick few moments. I took her number. I gave her mine. I think I took her number and um, we decided we would talk soon. So after that point, uh, we went back on another event spree. We were dancing, 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 event, 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 classes, classes, classes. So I was like, you know, after all of that, it was like a week I hadn't called her. I hadn't reached out after we had met. And so she was like, well, when I called her, I was like, uh, uh, you said you live right up the street from me, right? I'm on North Main. Uh, you said you're on North Main, right? And she's like, yeah, I'm right up the street off of Franklin. I'm like, well, it's a truck, garbage truck. Let me move on down here. She's like, uh, yeah, I'm right here off of Franklin. I'm like, where's Franklin? She's like, right by Harlem. I was like, well, I'm on the corner of John. That's where Harlem is. And where's Franklin? And she was like, it's right here, right before you hit Harlem. So I walk out my door and I um, go four houses down, literally just four houses down. She lived for me. Now, I was here for a year and uh, some change before I even seen her. But I was in my apartment 
for quite a few, I think it was, uh, what, like five, six months or something like that? I don't even remember, but I was there for a while, and I had been here in Rockford for over a year and some change, and we never saw each other. She was four houses down from me. You cannot tell me that's not by design. So anyway, I go over there, and uh, she opens the door, and... You know, we're hanging, I go up in her house, her apartment, and she's right off the river, this beautiful, beautiful uh, place right off the river. Um, it's like the perfect angle um, to see the river and look down the river and with the sunset, and it comes through the windows perfectly. It was like a safe haven, spiritual safe haven, and she was single. She was there for eight years by herself. Um, she dated, but she did not commit to anybody. She wasn't having sex like that. She was just healing from her past relationships and some serious things that happened to her from her past relationships. We went into all of that. She explained all the stuff she went through and she had a time of it. She had a go of it, but what, what, what it was is she was learning, you know, how she wanted to be treated. She was learning what she, her standards, her values, her principles, and that's the kind of guy she wanted. And so when I was in Florida, uh, my, uh, getting ready to leave, my whole thing, because I, I was leaving a 10-year relationship, so I had to readjust my thinking about how I was going to live my life, what I wanted to do. So my goal at that time was going to California and, you know, using my talents, getting paid for my passions. That's what I've been saying since the 90s. So I wanted to be, you know, an artist and do all these different things with my talents and not work a nine to five job. So that was basically my direction. So when I came down here, I was going to heal from my mom and everything that happened with that and then head out to Cali eventually. Uh, but when I ran into baby, it was like... <laughs> We we just hit it right off. Like I remember the first day, like we were in her apartment and we were going through, like you know, just catching up on life and everything that we were, um, we had gone through, uh, our pains, our fun, you know, what do we do now? What are our interests and all of this kind of stuff? And she was, I'll tell you what, y'all, my queen, sweet preen. Shannon, she was unlike anything, anybody, anywhere, at any time. Nobody's like my queen. I mean, nobody. She is totally, totally super brilliant, intelligent, uh, super, super talented. I mean, on so many facets, from singing to playing the piano to playing, doing them both to painting to... It's, it's nonstop. She's probably the most voracious uh, researcher I ever met. Like, if she has a goal, she's going to get to it. If she has a question, she's going to find the answer. If there's a solution, she'll have it. She'll get it. And she was my teacher, my wise counsel. Because, see, in, in uh, Orlando, back in... It was like 2011, yeah, 2011, 2010. I'm walking around, like looking around, like why is it everywhere I go, I see the same things? Now, I'm in Orlando, Florida, so we got theme parks, we got Disney World, Universal, you know, SeaWorld, all this kind of stuff, you know, um, and it just, I had been to all that stuff. I had done all that stuff many times. So I'm thinking to myself, what is it? What am I missing? I'm 35. I'm supposed to, like, feel, like, grown. Why don't I feel grown? What am I missing? It's like something huge. Just, I can't, I don't get it. What am I missing? So I started talking to God about it. And I'm asking God, what am I missing? I need you to show me what I'm missing, right? So I started working out, preparing myself for Cali, 
And I was getting in the best shape I could be in. I wasn't looking for no relationship. I thought my wife was like 10 years down the road or something like that because all I could con- con- conceive of is like me doing my my talents and abilities and, you know, building a career and networking and all of that. So I thought I would meet up with her eventually, but that wasn't on my radar at that time, nowhere near it. So, um, I, um, oh, so I'm over there and we're talking and I'm learning about her interests and, uh, she has some really, really cool things that she was into that nobody, I don't know, no, no, I don't know anybody who does any of the stuff she does or knew anything about the things she knew about. But I remember this time she said, uh, have you ever heard of heart math? I'm like, no, what's that? And she was like, well, it's this um, computer program. All you got to do is put these things on, like these nodes on your hand, these uh, sort of like things. You basically, you put on these things on your fingers and then you're kind of like tied to the computer and it's like, You got to raise your vibration, right? You got to think about love. And then while you're thinking about love, you see the green across the screen at a high level while you're thinking about maybe a person, whatever you can think of to keep you at that high love vibration. uh, You can see it on the screen. So you think about someone and you hold that vision and then you see the math basically of your heart and if you hold it for a certain period of time compared to if you think about somebody else how fast it drops and this sort of thing so I was just bugged out that that was even a thing you know I ain't know nothing about it I thought it was awesome then she got into showing me so many different things but these ones really stuck out a neogram or enneagram and so this is like um And she did these readings, their neogram readings, and basically anybody can do it because any of us, you, me, them, your mom, your sister, your brother, all of us fall under the rainbow. Sorry to tell you people, I don't know what it is about these neogram readings, but some people are so weirded out that they have a number associated with their personality. Doesn't mean anything, people. It's, it's, It's a tool to help you understand you and who's in your life, your family. So basically, I'll get into it a little bit. So a neogram, basically, they're personality types one through nine. All of us fall within that one through nine category, no matter who you are. There's head types, there's gut types, or you could say body types, and there's um, head, body, uh, and heart. And baby was a heart type, so uh, I'm a head type. So, uh, basically, and there's body types. So if you process, most of your processing is going to come through. If you're a body type, it'll come through your gut, your, your belly. That's where you make your decision from there. Um, my queen, a lot of times she's a heart type. So she makes hers, she's in her emotions fast and that's how she processes. Uh, me, I'm automatically in my head first. So I'm a seven. My queen was a four. I don't know what it is with people when they do to some of these people, when they do the readings, they feel like they're going to be classified as something. No, it's just a tool to help you, yo. It's really cool to me because I can read people now. I didn't know about none of that. Now I understand how they like typecast in movies and scripts. They usually use sevens and fours. Artists, most artists are sevens and fours. Anyway. Um, so from that, um, she, she got me to understand the difference in why certain relationships don't work and people holding the wrong poles in relationships and stuff like this. So basically, uh, say you got a eight, a eight on the neogram is basically like the take charge alpha dude. He's the alpha in the room. He'll be the first one to get up, protect. This is a healthy eight. Um, An unhealthy eight is like a bully, um, just a really like dominant person, probably an abuser or something like that. Now, uh, 
imagine if this eight has a five for a son. Five five is like more bookish. Like the kid likes to read books. He's into science and all this kind of smart, intelligent stuff. The dad doesn't understand any of that. Why is his son not like him? Wants to be playing sports, this and that. He wants to be in the house reading the stuff. Well, his personality type is different. So I'm learning all of this through baby, right? And then we got into integral. And integral is integral. Like in to grow. <laughs> you got to integrate, <laughs> integral. And so um, I had never heard of any of this. I haven't heard of Susan Cook Reuter before. I hadn't heard of David Data. I hadn't heard of Ken Wilber and all these uh, Roshi, Ken Roshi, or no, I'm saying the name wrong, but all these different people, you know, and they were of a different, they were of higher consciousness and they were teaching about higher consciousness. So from there, we went on to so many other things because I was asking the creator myself so many questions. I wanted to know how does this place work? I needed to know about politics. I need to know how money really works. I needed to know how the medical profession works. I needed to know how the courts and all of this work because I I feel like I got injustice happen to me while I was in Orlando. That's another story. But all these different things, you know, I needed to know about. And guess what? My queen was the one to teach me. I mean, she was so versed, so many, she was so diverse in so many things. She knew so much and she uh, studied and she researched so she was a, a bartender at that time because she had walked away from uh, her nursing career. She walked away from a lot of money. And so this is where really the story begins. So uh, my queen was working with the health department uh, back in like 2004, 2005, I think. And this is after 9-11. Uh, they did the whole... Uh, smallpox vaccine mandate. So she winded up having to get the uh, smallpox vaccine thinking, you know, that's a good thing because it, they were coming down with bioterrorism and they had this whole anthrax shit going on. Well, baby winded up getting vaccine injured, uh, adverse re uh, reaction from it, and it started to mess her up bad. I mean, even until she passed, she still had problems with that shit. And so we talked about all of that and how she had to make a moral decision about leaving her nursing career, even though she made that kind of money and all of this kind of stuff. Because when you have that kind of lifestyle, you want to keep it. You don't want to downgrade or none of that. But she winded up doing it and her past relationship uh, didn't work out and it Winded up being super bad before me. And um, so she winded up getting the place that she got and all of this. And yeah, it was just, you know, she was by herself for eight years. Just waiting and healing from all her past trauma. And waiting, conditioning her space for a good man. She told me some of the friends she talked to about the dude, the kind of guy she wanted. And they told her, that's unrealistic. That guy doesn't exist. That's what they told her. And so she trusted herself. And she winded up cutting all these people out of her life, doing her own thing. And that's when I came in. And so once we got together and we started learning, she started teaching me. I mean, everything took off, y'all. Like I just, all the questions that I've ever had, have been answered now. And it's because of all the work that me and her put in. I mean, we had so many struggles. We were homeless. We we uh, had a lot of money issues. You know, we had a lot of issues with the dancing. We were trying to, because I was dancing at the Rock. She was taking the pictures, and then she started teaching with me. Everything was working good. They wanted to build... Um, build up the rock even more they were talking about putting in floors and expanding the room for bigger classes but they only want to pay me twenty dollars a class 
And I'm like, I can't pay my bills that way. So we winded up leaving the rock. We went over to that Studio Z. That was cool for a little while, but we wanted to expand. And, you know, there's not a lot of opportunities for artists, y'all. So if you have a good artist, you should support them. You know, that's just what it is. It's not a lot of good art, not a lot of good opportunities out here. In a lot of places, it just feels like it's all monopolized so you can't be successful. But that's another story. And so me and Baby kept trying and trying and doing different things. And uh, we were just doing what we love to do. And eventually... uh, what ended up happening from there? We were, we stayed with a couple friends. OG, my homie, OG, she looked out. Um, we stayed with her for a little while. My homie Risa, she was there for me, uh, for us. My boy Courtney, and so this was a time. The reason why we were homeless is because we were trying to do. We were trying to actually, you know, use our talents and abilities. Uh, to make money, but we couldn't. And, oh, I, I skipped some stuff. Baby was a bartender, and, uh, you know, she worked there the whole eight years or whatever she was working. She worked on the website and all of that. When we got together, they found out I'm a brother. She winded up losing, like, a lot of hours from her job, so she couldn't pay her bills, and so... We went through racist stuff. We went through all kinds of stuff in a small amount of time, y'all. And so a lot of stuff started to crumble on us. But it was meant to be because I was going to be baby's teacher now. I had to teach her how to trust the creator because that's all I've known my whole life. I've been through so many things. uh, (laughs) That's all I had was the creator to trust. And the creator guides you. Whether you know it or not, you can be guided. You can ask the creator questions. He speaks back to your your consciousness through signs and symbols. You got to know how the creator speaks. It's talking to you. You know, we too TV-fied. We too pop culture-fied to see what's right in front of us. We, we forget there's two worlds here. You got the creator's place, which he made for us which is sky and sun and moon and trees and wind and all the beauty out there, flowers and all of this, puppies and all this, right? And then you got an evil system. So what winded up happening is the evil system kept doing its thing. Me and baby kept studying. We just kept staying on what mattered to us. And what mattered to us was truth and love. We wanted... Just basic truth. So we winded up getting... So YouTube was popping for a while, y'all. It's not like that no more. We did a video called The Dead Internet Theory because they it's their shit. It's social engineers' way of making changes and things like that. So what was on the YouTube back then when we were studying is no longer there. You can't find it. All those videos have been taken or they're in a place where you can't access them. You can only access access the videos that they have on there that they want, or unless you have a channel and you tell your friends or whatever and they subscribe, but you're not getting millions of views or hundreds and thousands of views. You can hang that shit up unless you already got a strong following. Anyway, so all the stuff we were learning was basically lies, so many lies. Everything's is lies. We think, you know, the collective walks around, people every day do what they do. They think they know shit. All of us think we know shit, and we don't know nothing. All of us had have a peasant's education, y'all. That's on purpose. You think you smart. All of these doctors and scientists, all these professionals, they have no, you're not using your creator given senses. It's not the same as your academic knowing. You might have a job where you are an expert in this field or whatever. But a lot of times in that too, you got to watch them because they're getting big money. So you do things for big money. You wouldn't get that kind of money if you weren't. A lot of times. I'm not saying you 
you can't get big money without doing something shady, but a lot of times you can get people to do shady stuff with money. So you got to just know who is who, y'all. And so me and baby, we've been on this path now for a while. We've we've basically unlocked the mysteries to how all of this really works. And I'm just so proud of her. Like I've never met anybody like her to want to do what she had her heart set on doing. And that's just bringing truth and love to this place. Truth and love. Truth matters, y'all, because if you don't have it, somebody can either manipulate you, make you believe something that's not true. They can get you to do things that you have no business doing, but you think you should because everybody else is or because they set the narratives. Yo, people, we are getting played on so many fronts. It's about to get real, 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 real bad. They're going to go way further than you, you thought the Rona and all that shit, which is not real. It's all tied to the same things. This is templates, people. This is one template that's used for everything. For movies, for books, for music, for everything in pop culture that we love. That's what they have done. They have created social engineering ways for the people. For us to stay divided, for us to always be arguing about something. You got all these denominations in one religion. Why? Why can't all these so-called Christians see the same things? Why is there so many different interpretations? Why is there so many different gods? Why is there so many different gods? Wouldn't there just be one? Oh, so you think your God is right. You got the right God. Who the hell y'all think y'all are? Y'all don't use, we're not using our creator given senses. There's only one creator, the creator of creation. That's who I honor. I'm not going to honor something that I know is made up in the sky that I can show you how it's made up. These things happen every year. That's what Easter's for, the Easter horizon. So that's what they're explaining to you. The things that's in the sky perform those stories every year. So the, you know, the rising, the um, resurrection, all of this is happening every year in the sky. And there's certain constellations, planets and alignments that they use to explain the story. We're symbol illiterate as the collective, the masses of people. We have no idea what is going on. So it's a, it was important for me and baby to know what was going on. So we got into the law. We started finding out all this crazy stuff. Like, why is the law against the people. We thought we were the people. We're not the people, y'all. We didn't sign the um, Declaration of Independence, the Constitution. They're talking about themselves. Anybody that's a public official like that, those are the people, not us. And then what they've done is so dirty is create a straw man for you and me with a capital name. So all your name, every time you see your name in the mail, on any kind of bill, and it's capitalized, that's not you. That is not you. That's your trust coming from the Social Security. But at the same time, they make it look like it's you. That driver's license that you have, anything that you have that you have to sign for, all of this kind of stuff... Is not you. It's your character. It's a character they made up for you, a straw man. So that's how come they can arrest you for uh, a crime with no no real harm. You know, if you didn't hurt nobody, it's really not a crime. You know, but not paying speeding tickets and all this kind of stuff. They can lock you up for all kinds of shit, but it's really not a law. What they do is create legal instead of lawful, and we, like, fall for the trick of, yeah, that's me, I'm that straw man, I'm that trust, 
that's a whole nother story. But people, you do not know the scope of how big these lies are. You think you just walking around and everything is fine and dandy and everybody loves one another, kumbaya. But the people that you trust that are at higher levels that you look up to as far as like politics and, you know, politicians and all these kind of people, they're all actors. They even tell you they're actors. And it's just so crazy that it's gotten so deep. This has gotten so deep that it's going to get worse because y'all don't want to see what you need to see. It's a choice, y'all. So even though, you know, all this is happening and everything is the way it is, I still, I'm still going to do the work. I'm still going to walk it out. And I'm not going to do none of the shit that I know I shouldn't. Do you know I did not wear a mask the whole Rona? I would not do it because I knew it was wrong. It was against the creator. I I wasn't born with no damn mask. So y'all telling me God is stupid now. So God creates these illnesses and everything is just out of whack. No, it's a sky story that people in charge that you let be in charge of you run these stories and scripts. All sports is scripted, y'all. Everything is scripted. The games are already planned to go to the time, I mean, to the scores that they want at the end for betting and all of that. They practice together, all of that. It's all scripted. Sports, basketball, NBA, NFL, all of that. It's all scripted. I'm sorry. That's why I stopped watching it. I ain't had a TV in my house for I don't know how long. This is about why baby and me did what we do. And what we what I will continue to do is because it's the most important thing we could have ever given y'all. We gave y'all an inheritance. We gave y'all everything we could have gave y'all. Like if someone was to come up to us today and would say, if you give me your work, we'll give you a hundred billion dollars. You can keep your money. I don't want your $100 billion. I want the truth to get out so we can start making the changes that is necessary. Money, they can do anything with money. The social engineers don't even use money. They just go in and get whatever the fuck they want if they even want anything. They are the ones that run this place. They don't need money. We use money. They use money to keep us uh, running around and losing our minds. And do you know all of the problems me and baby had weren't from each other. They were from outside things outside of us, family, friends, uh, money, things in the system that we have to get in order just to keep afloat. We didn't have problems. Me and my queen, we were, it wasn't a push pull. It was win, win. It was easy. No arguing, no fighting, no I'm starting stuff with you because I got an attitude or you getting on my nerves. We didn't do that to each other. We had a beautiful, beautiful, real, true love relationship, y'all. And we shared the most important discoveries together. I mean, the things we found are, I mean, they're heaven sent. And we get to share that with Everybody, because we're not in that club. We're not celebrities. And thank God, I realize now all the years where I was so upset, why things weren't working out for me, why I wasn't able to get to where I wanted to go, why uh, I keep getting all these setbacks when I feel like this so close. I even had people close to me saying, T, it sounds like you're so close. It seems like you're so close. I wonder why. <laughs> I almost broke my neck. You're so close. I wonder why you can't get to the point where we think you should be or where we know your talent is. And I'm like, I have no idea. Well, I know now. I truly know. We were protected. Me and baby were protected our whole lives so we can get this work done. And we were never going to make it in the industry because you have to, like, you have to 
per- pervert yourself. You have to be willing to do things of lower standing, lower moral standing. I've been approached with all kinds of stuff, and I did not do any of it. A lot of the stuff, you know, as young men, we thought, you yeah, know, you know, with sex and all of this. I, I wish I would have known what I learned from my queen when I first met her. She told me, yeah, we're not supposed to have sex with just random women because that's how we were taught. But we weren't taught about chemically bonding to that person. You chemically bond to people when you make love to them. Just automatically, your body's going to chemically bond and want to be with that person even more. So I didn't never know that. I'm out here. We were out. We were young. We we weren't. We didn't have dads. We didn't have people to tell us how to be like correctly. And if we did, they didn't have the correct information. A lot of them. So we learned wrong. We out here doing it all wrong, treating women wrong, treating girls wrong. Look at the music, the messages in the music and what we grew up on and how we looked at the women. You don't think that's social engineering at its finest? Still to this day, y'all, everything has a place. Everything has a purpose. And most of it is evil. You just have to be able to see it for what it is. Yeah, you get to drive around. You get to... uh go to the store, you get to go buy some stuff, you get to have luxuries in your home. But when they start pushing the envelope on your freedom, on you and your wife and your kids and demanding you do this, you do that now, I'm not doing any of it. My queen was killed. Like, I don't want to say kill. My my queen... This ain't going to work. My puppy barking. My queen, she took that shot. And I know that shit had a uh, place. I know it, it had a problem. She had a problem with that shot. And I know it probably had something to do with her passing so young. She also trusted Dennis. And those Dennis fucked her teeth up. And she was starting to have problems with her teeth. But most of all, I think it's just being blocked. It was from being blocked by her family members, from being blocked by people not receiving the work we were doing, being blocked by, you know, so much, man. Like, we went through it. Y'all have no idea how much work and effort we put in for y'all. And just for it just to get knocked out of our hands. When the Rona happened, she got on Facebook, she did her very best to just let y'all know, no, it's not real, it's not. And we already knew because we, the stuff that we had put out before with the crisis actors, with all this other stuff on our previous uh, YouTube channel, we were already ready. So when the Rona happened, we had just released a video series on these uh, celebrities and um, how they are in news stories walking around, acting like they're somebody else in the news stories, playing the victim, playing the uh, abuser or killer or whatever the fuck. Then I wind up finding 2020, everybody on those shows are actors. They're just Tom Hanks and Eminem and Kobe Bryant, all these people with a different face on. 2020, all of that shit, y'all. All of it. All the serial killers. All that shit. None of them people dead either. I found Left Eye. I found Aaliyah. Shit. Tupac, Biggie. All of them still alive, y'all. Fucking Kobe ain't dead. That's fucking David Goggins. They just changed their face. Robin Williams, he's still doing so much shit out there deceiving people. They all over YouTube playing all these different personalities. And that's... That's them in their normal face with a disguise on. It's easy to see them, y'all. It's ridiculous. And this is how they're able to keep the social engineering going. 
You know, for people to just sit back and not be able to see what's right in front of their face. And then you get somebody like us who really loves you and cares about you to try to tell you. And you just knock it out of our hands, not even try to see. I mean, one of y'all representatives is a woman. Mike Tyson is a woman. Who is that? Stacey Abrams? That's Mike Tyson, y'all. Look at him. That's Mike Tyson. And fucking Sheila Jackson is uh, Denzel Washington. Y'all got to pay attention to who the hell y'all listening to or not listening to that's on the news. Because if they in the background, just turn your face to see who they is. It's probably somebody you know. And in disguise. And this is how they keep it going. And so me and Baby dropped that series. We was ready to show everybody. And then they came out with the Rona. The next thing they said, wear a mask. Next thing me and Baby was trying to say, they was going to come out with the, the shank. The vaccine, because that's what she had to go through. And she got fucked up from it. And we was, we was very adamant. I let her just do her own thing at first. Everybody was coming at baby for uh, being the one standing out saying it's wrong. She was the only one. The only one. Everybody that stepped up to her to say something about her being wrong about that, she knocked their ass out. Nobody could fuck with my, my queen with when it came to writing her pen game was too fucking tight i told her that i told her that all the time i said pen game tight they ain't fucking with you and she got on this thing if y'all want to ever see baby's insights get on cora it's this thing called cora digest everybody that stepped up to baby to try to use their opinion and their belief they got their ass knocked out with the truth and that's every single body she never lost to nobody I didn't see her lose to not one person. I seen all of the communications on Facebook, on Cora, and family. She knocked out everybody every time because we don't fuck around with opinion and belief. We got to know the truth, and that's what we're going to stand on. And so that's what we had when all of this shit happened with the Rona. Get ready. Strap on your fucking seatbelt because it's going to get a lot worse. Y'all going to find out. What's really, really going on? Because one day they're just going to unmask and tell you. At least now you got somebody who loves you that's telling you already. If we just get the information so we know to say no to the wrong things instead of saying yes to the wrong things and then paying for it later. Because that's where we're at. The collective masses of people, we don't think, we just do Because the news is saying that, you know, policies are changing, this, this, and the other. I'm telling you, you got to know before you make a decision. How can you make a decision if you don't have definitive information? And so that's what the important thing was. Once we saw what they did with the law and then with those crisis actors, how they were making these news stories, the next thing we know, the creator just kept leveling us up. He showed us next, these celebrities are in the news stories and have been doing it their whole career. So all the news stories from 9-11, Jamie Foxx is in that shit, playing an African dude. That's why he had that African uh, segment in his damn um, stand-up. I Might Need Security was the name of his shit. And yeah, he might need security because his ass straight up lying. You know, these people, and they're really not lying. they just acting, and we believe they're acting. So is it really lying, or is it us believing the lies? It's us believing the lies, y'all. And I don't need to believe anything. If nobody taught me to believe, I would have been way better because I was the biggest believer. I believed everything. And come to find out, <laughs> there's nothing to believe. There's nothing to believe, y'all. You need to know and then make your choices from knowing. If you're making your choices from believing, you're in a dangerous place. Do I believe in God? No. I know the creator. I have a personal relation with, relationship with the creator and I'm guided. I am truly, deeply guided and connected. And it's rumors going on about my baby from my own family member. Yo, I could call you out. I could say a lot of stuff right now. 
But I tell you what, you do it how you want to do it the rest of your life. I disown you. We ain't got nothing else to do with each other. But I'm going to tell you this. You already messed up when you said what you said about me and baby. The karma's coming. It's going to be so bad. Anybody around you is probably going to feel the explosion. I'm sorry, but that you don't know about karma and how it works. When you go against somebody who hasn't done anything to you and doesn't do the same things that you do, and you just keep digging it in, you just keep on going with it, and you just keep on lying, you won't admit you wrong, you won't admit that you lie, you won't admit to yourself, and you start believing your own lies, life is going to take care of you. I ain't got to do nothing. I can stand back and just get the news because that's what's going to happen. I'm going to get the news that you got fucked up real bad. That's what's going to happen. You ignorant. You're a little boy. My wife never liked you. She tried, but she was trying to tell me and we, I, I did, I did my best and look at you still to the day, to this day, you lying. You know, we gave you umpteen chances like when I should have been done with you a long time ago, anybody that's encouraging you for beating other women, bailing you out for all the shit you do, why you hitting girls? You got to be able to understand, no, you're not a changed dude. Don't try to use your kids to say you a changed dude. Life going to show you change because you came at the wrong one this time. I let a lot of shit slide with you. I let a lot of shit slide. This is not going to slide. I guarantee you, you're going to pay. Watch. And you better start making amends. You better start apologizing to yourself. You better apologize to my queen from where you at. Because those lightning strikes and thunders bolts that's going to hit your ass, it's going to be real, real bad. Real, real bad. And you deserve every bit of it. Because you ain't shit. And the rest of this tribute, she it's, it's perfect. She don't want some airy fairy bullshit. My queen was the realest there was. And we talked just like this. We talked about everybody that was against the truth. We didn't gossip. We was talking truth. All the liars, all these people that cause problems and divide family members and all this kind of shit. People holding the wrong pose. Y'all looking for money to be the number one thing. Like, what happened to truth? What happened to wisdom? What happened to morals? What happened to values and principles? The things that make up a good man or woman. Without those, who cares how much money you got? Without any of the things I just listed, especially your morals, your values, your morals, your, do you tell the truth? Do you, are you honest? Well, why would I care how much money you got if you're not an honest being? You might try to take what I got if you're not an honest being. You might try to do a lot of stuff if you're not an honest being. So this is just it, y'all. We have to care about what matters. We have to care about truth, the biggest truths, because what they've done is they've given us sports. They gave us, you know, TV shows, movies. You can go to concerts. You got, you know, your radio. You got your stereo. You can play your own music. All this shit is played out, y'all, because it's only so much they give you under the sun every day. And the main things that you're missing They're just waiting on you. The truth is your inheritance. It's out here now. Me and baby sharing it with you. And I just, I'm so proud of her. I've never been more proud of anybody my whole life. Like what we did and what we shared, we fucking did it. And she's fucking ascending. My queen is ascending and she's the phoenix fucking rising. And the reason why is... The sun is going to be, it was rising up in the east when she passed. And she was rising with the sun, so that's the fire. And the phoenix constellation, which is on her back, that she didn't even know was a constellation. Uh, And this tarot reader called her the phoenix rising. So I went back and remember, that's a constellation. 
And then I looked and checked the stars in the sky on the night, uh, the day that she passed. Do you know that Phoenix was all the way up over the horizon? When she was born, it was right, it was just the head star, the brightest star, Anka, I think it's called. That one was all the way up, just one star. When she passed, the whole constellation Phoenix was up. And she went at like 6.30 in the morning. So, yeah, that's the Phoenix rising. She also taught me about Venus, all the planets and their their cycles and how long uh, they take to get back to the position they started at. Well, Venus makes an eight-point star for every year she cycles around to get back to that same place. Venus is the planet of love. We were married. We were together eight years. So she's my Venus. She's my Phoenix rising. All of these tarot readings that I listened to, I couldn't believe it. Because I don't believe a damn thing. But each and every one of them said it's her time. And that she's going to the next level to reach for the stars, say farewell, say farewell to the moon cancer, because that's her rising sign. Mine's, my rising sign is Aquarius, and I had Saturn in my uh, rising sign. And another thing that we needed to talk about is the power of those planets and what they omit, the energies and frequencies. Uh, they all play a huge part in... in um, what goes on here? You should read up on Mars, the, the planet of Mars, and what it expects of you. What it, Because um, all these planets are teacher planets. They're, they're wanting us to level up. So once me, once me, once, like my queen just passed, right? She ascended. Once I go, uh, neither one of us are going to come back and repeat the same lessons. So if we come back, we're going to be completely different souls. We'll have way more knowledge to like surpass. Like Because the information that we have now, we're going to surpass that in the next life. We're going to ascend past. My queen was at turquoise consciousness. Like I said, this place is green consciousness. That's the highest out there right now is green. And that's all you professionals, all you experts, all you people of, you know, that's your, your, your field, that's your, where you got your bachelor's, your master's, and all of this kind of stuff. Your doctorates and all of this. Yo, a lot of y'all, you need to use your creator-given senses, not a, a, a academic mindsets. Because you're getting played on all sides. All of us are. And a lot of y'all accepting money to play us when you're still playing yourself. And all of it's going to come out because truth is, y'all, lies fall. The truth remains always. You can only hold lies up for so long. The problem is, is when y'all find out the truth, it's been so long since you uh, remembered about the lie that the truth doesn't matter anymore to you. Well, the truth matters to me. The truth mattered to my queen, and that's exactly what we gave y'all. We gave you the ability to see for yourself the revelation of the method. We gave you the ability yourself to free yourself from deception. But that's a choice. That's all we got. That's all we have to give. She gave you the best of her. I gave you the best of me. We gave you the best of us. And it's not over. We're going to keep going because she'll be downloading me with a lot. And I'm going to keep the the torch. I'm going to keep the torch lit and keep it going. Because this place needs healing. This whole realm, this whole place, creator's place needs a healing. And we need to stop substituting the creator's place for the evil system that's at play. You know, we got to see, like, what is really... What really matters to us? Because I keep seeing people, y'all just totally oblivious to how y'all got played, your religion, your education, all the things that we are given 
are all like based on a small person. You're supposed to grow past that. You're supposed to have more questions. For me, I wanted to know, is Jesus real? I asked the creator and he showed me. You can ask the creator anything. He will show you. It might not happen that same day, but you got to be willing to be open. You got to be willing to be teachable. You can't be closed off. You can't be set in your way so set that you don't want to see the truth. And that's where a lot of people are. Y'all think y'all already know everything and that's why y'all getting played and that's why the state of the world stays like it is nobody's standing up and making a difference i'm gonna stand up and make that difference i'm not wearing no fucking mask i'm not taking no shanks you can keep your vaccines you can keep your mask any of your fucking mandates all of that shit i'm gonna do it correctly for my queen for myself for the creator and that's just exactly what it is this is a tribute to my queen and myself, because I'm gotta, i going to keep living on for as long as I got left. But when I go, I'm going to be so happy because I know what's expected. What I, what I know what to expect. I can expect my two favorite people, my mama and my heaven. Shannon was my heaven. And tonight is a full moon. And she's going to, when she passed, uh, it was a new moon. It was only three degrees. Right now, the moon is 99%. Tonight will be 100%. So this tribute is going up tonight on the full moon. And it's going to release her from all the shit that she did, all the struggle, all the pain, all the trying to share her work with people that she loved for them to knock it out of her hand. Like, no, nah, that's all right. I don't care about that shit. That's not nothing for me. I mean... This is the greatest thing anybody can give you. I don't care if it's from me, her. It could be from anybody. If somebody was to give you what we are giving you free for you to change and become who you really supposed to be through truth and living that way by knowledge and knowing, then you get wisdom and then you walk that out. That's who me and my queen is. That's who she became and she trusted the creator before she passed 100 percent. she said it every day i feel like everything is changing for the better and it did because even though i'm in pain that she she's gone it was written in the stars it's her time to be gone and i found her we found each other we've lived each other we lived many lifetimes together many many lifetimes i've been with her And we're going to be together many more. We're going to find each other over and over and over again. Every lifetime. Every new lifetime, I'm going to find her and be with her again. Because this place is magic. You magic. I'm magic. We all magic. But we got to tap into the magic. We got to know that we're connected to something deeper here. Not religious. God's not. You can go with God. I don't have God. I have the creator. There's too many gods. Not, not, nothing wrong with those gods because you can learn from those gods. But just know they're in the sky. There's symbols in the sky over your head that are up there right now. If you knew the story or if you learn our work, you can see for yourself. But a lot of y'all superstitious, you don't know what the occult is. Somebody says occult to you and you get freaked out, you superstitious. All occult means is hidden. Hidden knowledge, occult knowledge, hidden knowledge. But we so dumb, they put shit in movies to hide the real definition of things. And we now think that's the real definition of it. That's how dumb we are. We don't like look up words and define them to see what they're really what's really going on there and that's something yo people we gotta be better we gotta do better we gotta care more about what matters and if you want to free your mind if you want to free your soul if you want to release from deception now you can because of my queen and i we gave you that ability and tonight my queen will rise like a phoenix from her ashes. And I'm just so thankful to be a part of it the whole way through. 
You're the best thing that ever happened to me, my queen. You're my best friend. You are true love. You are pure love. You're the truth. You're the real truth. You're real reality. You're the epitome of reality. The epitome of everything I came on this plane to get. Nobody can top you. Nobody can come close. And I'm truly, truly honored to be doing this tribute for you. You deserve so much more. And I'm going to keep our work going. And this is really like just a rant at the same time. It's a tribute because I don't want to be fake. I don't care about people's opinions. I don't care about your beliefs. If you're going to bring the truth, then we can talk. As long as you in Believe World, there's nothing we can talk about. I'm way past that. I don't need to believe shit. I used to be probably a bigger believer than you. But now that I know the difference and can show you how you can know too, and you can show your baby and on and on and on, that's where that's where I lie. That's my work. That's where I'm supposed to be. And that's where I am. So tonight, let's celebrate my queen. You hear my puppies? We celebrating you, baby. The puppies hike. Tonight, we're going to celebrate you, my queen. We're going to release all from all of this drama, all of this pain, all this crazy stuff that how our relationship ended. None of it matters anymore. What matters is what we did together, how we lived, how much we loved each other. Everything we shared and our work, our legacy. We left a leg you left a legacy with me. You helped me build a legacy with you. And vice versa. And I'm so, so thankful. I'm so grateful for every second. And you know, I wish I would have I could turn back time and do something different, but to know it's faded. The way these tarot cards are all telling me, these tarot readers, every single one had told me it's your time and that you're going on to more greater things and I'm going to meet you there. So this is your tribute, Shannon Lynn Thomas, my best friend, my everything. Thank you so much for a beautiful life together. Thank you for being good friends to my friends. Thank you for being a great Sia. Thank you for being a great daughter. Thank you for being a good uh, sister. Thank you for being a great cousin. But most of all, thank you for staying true to you and not sugarcoating these bullshit relationships where people want to sweep, sweep shit under the rug and never address anything. You keep doing that, it's going to keep getting worse. Now, a lot of people die every day. My queen, she didn't just die. My queen ascended. She literally ascended, and she's going to go to greater heights because of the work that she did here. She truly left a legacy. And for anybody who's, you know, you just got questions, you want to know what's going on, just put on starsnearme.com because you're going to get so much more information. I'm even going to put our old page back up, um, A Collective Life. I'll, I'll be putting that back up on YouTube too. Uh, Eclectic Life Works because we got advanced stuff on there and that's where the real, real meat of all of this is. And we're going to continue to go on. You know, I'm going to get on the website. We got merchandise. We got clothes. We got all kinds of stuff on there. We got books. My baby was an author. She got uh, like 10, 11 books on different websites. Our main website, which is starsnearme.com, on Reddit. I think she got some stuff on Etsy. She got stuff on Amazon. You just look for starsnearme.com and you'll see it. But thank you all so much for your time. I'm going to celebrate my queen tonight. And baby, we did it. We did everything we said we wanted to do. And we did it good. 
I'm truly, 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 truly amazed by how deep our connection is still. Like, and we're talking through, like, the the tarot readers are talking to me through you and vice versa. So I'm just in a place where, you know, all the stuff we, we were told, all the stuff we were taught, you know, we found the truth outside of it. We found the real truth outside of all these lies that hypnotize everybody all day for many years. And I know the ancients, I know all the people of the past are going to give you the standing ovation you deserve once you let go and ascend. Thank you so much, my phoenix rising from her ashes, Shannon Lynn Thomas. I love you. I love you so very much. I'm so in love with you, and I will always be in love with you. You are her. Like I always tell you, I love you, my queen, my heaven.